Well, thank you everyone and welcome to the fantastic seat of Reed. Uh, I'm joined here today by, of course, uh, Chris Bowen, Shane Newman, Chris Gambian, uh, our candidate for Benelong, Dr. Brian Aller, and our fantastic new addition to the Senate team, Jason Yatsen Lee. Uh, I'm really pleased and excited that uh, the Labor Party is making the announcement here today. Reed is, of course, a diverse and multicultural electorate. It's an electorate that far outstrips the national average when it comes to having parents born overseas. About 70, 76% of the electorate of Reed have at least one parent that's born overseas. This dramatically outpaces the rest of the, the rest of the country. So the announcement here today has special resonance with the people of Reed. I'd like to hand over to the Shadow Treasurer, Chris Bowen. Well, thanks very much, Sam. It's great to join you and Chris and Brian and Jason and, of course, my friend and colleague, Shane Newman, uh, for this important announcement. Labor understands the cultural, the economic benefits of multiculturalism for our country. Multiculturalism and a non-discriminatory immigration program are so important for the nation that we have become and the nation we aspire to be. We recognise the benefits of skilled migration, appropriately targeted, calibrated skilled migration and family reunion migration. Importantly, many skilled migrants to Australia have the hope and aspiration of one day bringing their parents to join them. They have to wait for decades for that to happen. In the meantime, they hope that their parents can come and join them and share in the upbringing of their children and share in the Australian experience for periods of time. For periods of time, even if they don't want or believe they can ever come here permanently, to come and spend time with their family. Now, this has been raised with Labor over many years and in the last term of office we introduced a parent visa, a, a parent stay visa, which was warmly embraced by Australia's multicultural communities. The Liberals lied at the last election and said that they would introduce a, a good long-term, long-stay visa for parents. It only comes into force on the 1st of July this year, despite the fact that it's promised in 2016 and it's a very inferior product. Today, Shane will run you through the details, but we're announcing a much better visa for long-stay parents in Australia. And the, while the visa is cheaper, it can be renewed on shore, and most importantly of all, the Liberals, the Liberals, want Australia's families to choose which set of parents can come to Australia. Mum's parents or dad's parents, you can only bring one. That is just gobsmacking. That is just gobsmacking. Under a shortened Labor government, you will not have to choose. You can sponsor both sets of parents. This is a very important and good announcement by Shane today, which has the support of our entire Labor team. I'm going to ask Shane to add to those details, and then I'm going to cover one other issue, and then it'll be over to you with the questions. Thanks, Chris. It's great to be here. Uh, Labor's listened to our migrant and multicultural communities. Uh, this announcement of Labor's fairer, long-stay parent visa will allow Australians for migrant and multicultural communities to be reunited with their loved ones. Because we believe it's important for children and grandchildren to know and be cared for by people significant to their care, welfare and development, and that includes grandparents. Labor's fairer, long-stay parent visa is cheaper, quarter the cost of the Liberals. It's uncapped. The Liberals is capped. Labor also will allow people to renew that visa onshore. The Liberals will make you go offshore to renew that visa generally. In addition to that, as Chris has alluded to, the Liberals are making partners have that conversation around the kitchen table saying, which set of parents should come to this country? Labor will allow both sets of parents to come. This is a three by three or a five by five year visa. We think it's important for grandkids and parents to, uh, to contact uh, their parents. At the moment, they're relying on tourist visas. That's simply not good enough. It's disruptive to family life. It's costly, it's difficult. We think it's important for grandparents to have that relationship with their grandchildren. So this is listening to the voice of migrant and multicultural communities. We've got rid of the unfair conditions. The Liberals have delayed their visa. You can't get their visa yet. You have to re-elect the Liberals before their visa comes into place. They promised that visa would be in place by November 2017, and they've broken that promise. Labor's fairer, long-stay parent visa listens to the voice of Australians for migrant multicultural communities. 
and act on their wishes. Happy to answer any questions. I did say there's one other matter, there's actually two other matters I'll touch on briefly. One I should have uh, said at the outset, which is of course all our thoughts and prayers with the people of Sri Lanka today. Uh, this is an unspeakable tragedy. And of course, I think every Australian would say to our brothers and sisters uh, from Sri Lanka where we did. I'm the representative of a substantial number of Sri Lankan Australians. I first uh, fell in love with the people of Sri Lanka in 1998 on my first visit there. I stayed at one of the hotels that was targeted at the Seven Grand. Uh, and the world, uh, wonderful hospitality provided by the people of Sri Lanka on my visits. And uh, of course, all that. Just our thoughts uh, and our best wishes of the people of Sri Lanka as they deal with this terrible tragedy. The other issue I just want to touch on is the fact that the Liberal Party is not content in running scare campaigns about Labor's policies. They've now been reduced to inventing policies. Now, I want to make it clear, I don't hold the Prime Minister and Treasurer responsible for every tweet or every statement or every text message by Liberal supporters, but I do hold them responsible for their own words. There's a subterranean campaign going on to try and convince people that Labor has a plan to introduce an inheritance tax. It is a lie. It is alleged that there's a deal between Labor and the Greens. As I understand, it's not even Greens' policy to have an inheritance tax or a death tax. Now, the Prime Minister was asked about this on the weekend, and he denied any knowledge of the text message, but then said, how do we know there isn't such a plan? Prime Minister, stop lying. Stop making things up. The campaign also includes a link to a Josh Frydenberg dishonest press release, which makes claims about an inheritance tax. We've seen a photoshopped fake tweet allegedly by Sally McManus, which is invented, and it was shared by a former Liberal Minister. I mean, guys, I'm happy to have a debate about Labor's policies. We have a robust policy agenda. I'm happy to defend and promote Labor's policies. But if the Prime Minister and Treasurer of the Liberal Party are reduced to inventing policies, it says a lot about them. And frankly, it says more about them than the Labor Party. And if they think they can treat Australia's communities in such disregard that they can run a fraudulent campaign, it says a lot about Scott Morris' character. So we say we send this very clear message. I'll debate Josh Frydenberg. I've offered him three debates. At this point, he's only accepted one. I'll debate Labor's policies. But if you're reduced to lying and inventing policies, it says more about you and your lack of vision and your lack of agenda for our country than it does about anything else. Shane and I have to take questions. We pointed out that we would oppose the privatisation of Medicare and, and any aspect of it. Uh, they are inventing a tax. They're inventing, just completely fabricating a tax. This does not exist, will not exist, under a Labor government. I mean, we, as I said, we've got a very robust policy agenda. I'm happy to defend all our policies, but I prefer to defend the real ones, not the ones that are a figment of Scott Morrison's imagination. These little thought bubbles. Uh, I'm not aware of that. They may or may not. Well, it doesn't have to be a dirty election campaign. That's up to Scott Morrison. As I said, we'll, we'll debate our policies. We'll debate their lack of policies. I mean, at some point, Scott Morrison might want to announce something rather than just running scare campaigns about Labor. I mean, we're now well on a week into the election campaign, and all we've seen is him inventing things about Labor policies. I wouldn't mind seeing in this contest of ideas, what's meant to be a contest of ideas, an idea from our opponents. I mean, Bill's been out there announcing our cancer plan, talking about wages this week, laying out our alternative vision for the country. Yes, we'll, we'll answer questions about our policies, but at some point, Mr Morrison might want to announce his own policy. What's his vision for Australia? He might want to stop running scare campaigns about our policies, but most importantly of all, he might want to stop inventing Labor policies. Shane, on the visas, um, do you guys have an idea about how many will come under the current arrangement? We think it will be very popular. Uh, no one's come under the current arrangement at all. Uh, we expect, and we've had this analysed by the Independent uh, Parliamentary Budget Office, we think this is an important initiative. Uh, we expect it to be very popular amongst migrant and multicultural communities. Quarter of the cost, uh, and of course, uncapped, uh, the Liberals have not listened, they've broken their promise, and this is an important initiative that Labor's announced. It's keeping faith with migrant and multicultural communities, the Liberals have broken their promise yet again.
there are wait times. Uh, one of the first things I'll do as the immigration minister is look at the current process. There's sponsorship processes going on right now, but you have to elect the Liberals on, on 18th of May uh, for their temporary sponsored parent visa to actually stop operate on the 1st of July. We'll use the current process and then we'll have our visa installed as soon as possible. No one did burden for taxpayers whatsoever. Uh, we will, there's a sponsorship of the process. Uh, people have to take out private insurance, private health insurance. They'll have to be responsible for any health debts. Uh, there'll be no work conditions. This is not a skilled migration program. This is about making sure that people from migrant and multicultural communities can get a time with, and love and affection uh, with their grandparents. This is what this is all about. It's listening to their voices. Uh, the current government's not listened to their voices. They've put in an unfair process and they haven't delivered the visa that they said they would three years ago. What kind of cost burden is it on families currently with, uh, with the system of trying to get parents out to Australia? Well, at the present moment of time, uh, they have a parent visa. As Chris alluded to, you have to wait up to 30 years to do, and, and the cost is close to 50000 on a contributing parent visa. Uh, so at the moment, uh, there's no process effectively uh, for people to get their, their parents over here to spend time with their grandchildren. Uh, so this is a good initiative by Labor. It's listening to the voices of migrant communities and making sure we put in place a process where people can spend up to 10 years uh, at a quarter of the cost of the Liberals to bring them to Australia to spend time with their grandchildren. Um, Gabrielle, can I ask a couple of questions here? Is your company grassroots and co-hosted? The grassroots and co-company that I set up a few years ago when I was I left my work as a union official, um, a little girl was born, I was doing some consulting business. Um, I'm in the process of finalising it up. Um, there was a mistake made last year around uh, paperwork and my accountants dealing with asset with that. Uh, the idea is to wind it up uh, because obviously I'm running for Parliament and I hope to be elected to the ASB. So, asset uh, generated is recommended on the top of the last year business. Yeah, that's right. And um, can you also tell us why they couldn't come up with the business? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I've moved house in the course of the last few years. Um, so, my best guess is that it's that, um, but I'm certainly contacted um, So, I don't know what's happened. Um, a month or so ago, my accountant started trying to work out um, the final paperwork that needs to be done to settle it all up, and it's very confident all sort of And also, can you tell us where? Festival Grove, which is in the Cedar Banks. So, it's a great address to your... No, I'm, I'm enrolled at Festival Grove. I've, I voted as an electorate at Festival Grove. Not three or four weeks ago at Stadler. And just finally, did you still operate? That was a fixed term project. It was about 10 weeks prior to the 2016 election, back to 2015. Um, it, was, uh, it was as part of the ACTU's effort. With that, I, I ran a number of projects as grassroots. Co grassroots, I might say, is a micro business. It's me and sort of occasionally a part time employee. Um, but no, that ACT project ended back in 2015. Mr. Bill, um, what's, the, what's Labor's specific concern about the $80 million water buyback that was overseen by Bargain Where do we start? Where do we start? Our specific concern is that $80 million was spent for apparently not very much, if any, water. Uh, that's point one. Uh, <coughs> point two, uh, the Department of Agriculture released a statement last week which raised more questions than it answered, in our very strong view. And Tony Burke has written to the department inviting them to provide further and better particulars. Uh, and we await that answer, those answers. This is a most serious matter. This is very serious. This government treats taxpayers' money like it's their own personal plaything. You know, almost half a billion for a, a private foundation for the Barrier Reef, agreed in one meeting with no process, no worries. You know, $80 million for water, which experts say was worthless. Mere technicality, says Barnaby Joyce. Details, like actually getting some water back into the system. Uh, the government has to answer these questions. The Department of Agriculture should answer Mr Burke's questions, and when we receive those answers, then we'll consider further 
our options, but if Mr Morrison and Mr Joyce and, and the government think they can just wave this away and it's going to go away, I think they are very seriously mistaken. Does Labor think any rules have been broken in this process? Well, that's what they're the questions we're asking at this point. We're, we're always very careful about these things. We don't make allegations without uh, doing due diligence and asking the right questions, and that's what Mr Burke has been doing. Uh, asking those questions, we hope and expect to see those answers. If those answers aren't satisfactory to us, then we'll consider what options are available to us uh, when and if we receive those answers. So, uh, we'll consider what those answers are. We will consider our options when we see the quality of the answers we receive. But, you know, the government should stop hiding behind it. Scott Morrison says we've released the documents. They've got, you know, more black marks in them than a school assignment. It's been redacted all the way through. All the key details are missing. Um, so, Mr Morrison's being very acute and tricky. He should just provide all the answers to Mr Burke. If the government's got nothing to hide, then they've got nothing to fear. But they clearly have quite a bit to hide. The New South Wales state election results suggest that water in the Murray Darling facing system is a huge electoral issue. What is Labor going to do about it? Well, of course, um, the Tain Burke has outlined our views about that issue, and I'm sure he'd be more than happy to provide you with further uh, answers on that. And of course, Every Australian, every New South Wales, New South Wales resident, every Australian saw those uh, those pictures uh, in the early part of this year and were dismayed. Um, and Tony has uh, visited the site, met with locals. That's more than the uh, environment minister was surprised to uh, He's been very proactive on the issue. Uh, look, I, there would be, I imagine, negotiations between um, the two relevant campaign head offices. I'm aware that one has been agreed in Perth. Um, I'm sure Bill would be happy to do more, but I'm not aware of the latest. These things you know, develop in a matter of hours. I do know this. I'm happy to debate Josh Frydenberg three times. I've offered him that. He has so far agreed to one. Um, if, if, if the economy is meant to be front and centre of the election campaign, I don't see why Josh Frydenberg is worried about debating me more than once. Joe Hockey debated me at least twice, including Q&A with an audience of one million people, but he was uh, treasurer. Not, not sure why the same is not good enough to just follow. Okay, any other issues? All good, all done? Thanks, Steve. Thank you. 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 Thank When I was a kid, uh, my parents uh, managed to get my grandparents to come out for six months uh, back in 1986. And those six months were probably the most precious six months of my childhood. Uh, being able to have grandparents around, uh, all the help with childcare that I'm certainly the beneficiary of these days, uh, makes all the difference for the way that we raise our kids but also the strength of our families. Labor's uh, fair uh, long stay parent visa is a great announcement for the people of Benelong. I know there are many people that live in our community that are going to benefit from this. Um, it's uncapped, it's cheaper, but best of all, it means that uh, people don't have to decide which set of parents they bring out uh, to be with them and their children. So we can not have to decide which grandparents get to spend the time with their grandchildren. I think this is a great announcement for Ben. Dajahao, Wushu Sam Crosby, Tashi Jason Yatsen Lee. What a Jong Wan Buhao. Treasure Ta the Jong Wan the Biu Hao. <笑>我这是Sam,这是我的好朋友,我叫李一先,然后Sam呢是我们工党的在Reach去的候选人,然后我跟Sam认识了好几年的,他以前呢是那个McKell <笑>工党呢就是刚宣布的一个新的一个政策